So in the previous video, we got this power supply cleaned up and ready to rock and roll to be a silent power supply. We installed the Noctua fan with the fan direction pointed out so it blows the hot air outbound. We used the adapter after tucking the wire uh, nice and neatly on the inside of the back. Now we're actually going to find out if this thing works by turning on our amp miner. We don't just jump into modifying the amp miner right away because there's some various particular things you need to know about it which we're going to cover in this video while we get the base setup going so with that being said let's jump into a little bit of pre-work a little little bit of preparation work we need to do in order to get ready to turn our amp miner on and then we will do just that we'll turn the amp miner on and attempt to flash the actual firmware itself on the amp miner with Hive OS using the web interface. If that doesn't work, we'll have to fall back to the SD card. Let's go. Now, again, we are going to be doing some prep work in this video as well as actually attempting to flash the actual firmware of the amp miner itself. But before you get started, you want to have the equipment that you need, right? Obviously, you'll need an amp miner L3 Plus, but you'll also need the replacement fans and the replacement screws. These fans are thinner. They're much thinner than the stock fans that come on these amp miners. Therefore, you can't reuse the screws uh, because the screws are just too long from, from the stock devices that come. You have to get replacement screws. So these are the fans that I'm using. These are very silent, but that's because they use significantly less RPMs than you would see on the stock amp miner uh, fans. Now, again, if you haven't watched the videos in this playlist, if you didn't watch the first video where you learned about my environment, stop right now, go back to it, because everything we're doing here is risky None of this is advice in any sort of way. You need to do all of your own research and make sure that this is going to work for you in your environment. I guarantee nothing. I warranty nothing. This can be an unsafe operation, so proceed at your own risk. So these are the fans that I'm using, and the screws that I purchased to go along with it uh, are these screws right here. Now, with that being said, there are a couple screws in particular. Like, uh, there's going to be eight screws total that you need. Uh, because we're going to have two fans, four screws per fan, uh, and there's two screws in the whole thing where you got to be a little careful about how you put them in because they can nestle right up to one of your boards and cause a circuit and cause a fire, which is uh, something I have personally experienced. So uh, with that being said, uh, these are the things that we're going to need. Now, here's the big issue. Uh, the amp miner, when it first comes online, it checks the fans and it makes sure that the fans are reading what they expect it to, that they can do things like 6,000 RPMs. It does a fan test. Uh, and if it were to do this with these stock, with these new fans, these Noctua fans, then it would fail the test and the amp miner would never come online. So what we have to do is we have to put a new firmware on this amp miner device so that we can override the fan check and then statically set the fan to run at a certain speed. For this operation, I strongly recommend using HiveOS. This is the only thing that I've done. So when you go to HiveOS.firm, you can click on Hive on ASIC at the top of the screen right there. I'm working with L3s, and I'm going to try... So here you see two options here. This is for trying to do it over the web or through some sort of network installation. This is doing it manually using an SD card. There is a, I'm going to say like an 80% chance you will be forced to use the SD card because L3 Pluses after something like 2019, uh, they came out with a new firmware that if you flashed the uh, Bitmain firmware just to be the 2019 version of it, at that point, it stopped accepting any third-party signatures, meaning it would not accept anything from a third party like HiveOS. So when you try and do it over the web, it says like, this is invalid, this is not going to work. Uh, so if your ASIC that you purchased comes with a firmware that's 2019 or later, you are stuck uh, having to go through the SD card process, which is honestly kind of a headache. It, it can be pretty difficult at times. There are places out there that will sell you the control board that already has Hive OS installed on it, which is pretty nice for something like 130 bucks. Uh, you'll want to buy a control board from eBay and reach out to the seller and ask them if they can do that first. 
uh, if they can flash it for you. So there, there is a workaround that is like that. But for the most part, uh, it took me several tries to actually understand the process of using the SD card. So I'm mentally preparing myself for having to do this again, uh, even though it's a total pain in the neck to have to do it. So if I'm lucky, I'll get to use the web. If not, I'll have to come back to the SD card. So what I'm trying to say here is you don't modify your Ant Miner at all until you have this firmware installed on it and the fan checks overridden and the fan speeds statically set. Only then can you then proceed to removing and replacing the fans. So that being said, let's get started. I'm going to download this firmware. I'm just going to dump it on uh, my desktop. Notice it comes in a tar.gz file. That is a zip file that is uh, very frequently associated with Linux operating systems. And uh, you don't unzip it. You leave it. You leave it like that. You just upload this tar.gz file straight into the web portal. Uh, and if it works, it works. If not, you come back to the SD card. So let's take a trip downstairs, see if the power supply is working by plugging in the stock ant miner into the power supply and then into the wall. Let's go. So I'm unboxing this ant miner for the first time. I've literally never seen it. Uh, my expectations of it are honestly kind of low uh, because it, it shipped from New York, but it actually has some, some Chinese labeling on it, which... You know, that means it obviously originated from China. I don't know if this was imported from Bitmain or whatever, or if this actually was a used unit that came uh, from one of those mining locations. Again, like I, I'm kind of expecting the latter and uh, hoping I don't have a dud here on my hands. Let's find out. Okay, this sucker looks brand new. I mean, like out of the box brand new. Did I just become the luckiest person on earth or what? There's no dust. There's no gunk. I mean, like even the, look at how shiny that is. This is unheard of. So I may have some luck here that this is a brand new one, except in the sense that I'll be unlucky that I'm gonna have to flash this by SD card because it's gonna have a new firmware. All right, here we go, let's find out. Okay, so now I have hooked up all the power cables and plugged the ethernet in. Now all I have to do is plug my C14 cable into my PDU, and the first thing I'm going to look for is notice the fan's not spinning right now, obviously. The very first thing that should happen is the fan should spin up. That means that the silent power supply operation has succeeded. So here goes nothing, and there goes the fan. All right, so now we're going to let it sit for about 60 seconds, because that's how long it takes for these amp miners to boot up. Uh, once they boot up and get spinning, then it's going to get really loud because that's what these, you know, these fans do. That's why we're here. That's why we're doing a fan swap. So uh, we'll let it spin up for about 60 seconds. And then I'm going to get the IP address of this device and then try to flash it from the web. Actually, I know I said we're going to do all this stuff. I wanted you to hear what it sounds like before so that you can get a, a good before image of what it sounds like before we do the fan swap. So this is it. Okay, so I used my router here. Let me just jump over here to the screen to find, I know that my 192.168.2 network that I have here in my house is where I run my miners. So I used that to find the IP address of my miner. I just went through these ones that are labeled Ant Miner. Uh, one at a time until I found the IP address, uh, which was this 192.168.2.48. It's going to be totally different in your environment. You're going to have to jump into your router uh, and look at the clients to find it, or you're going to have to use something like Angry IP Scanner. Let me show you a quick tidbit on how to do it. If you're not super network savvy and you don't know uh, what your IP address is or what your network is, bring up a command prompt and type IP config. Now you're probably only gonna see like one of these. And what you're looking for here is this section, IPv4 address and subnet mask. Basically, do you see how there's these 255s here, right there under, under the subnet mask section? They actually align perfectly with the decimals on your IPv4 address. So when I see 255.255.255.0, that means the network is 10, 10, 21. The zero means that this computer's address is that. 
So when I'm trying to find uh, computers that are on my network, I would want to scan 10, 10, 21 network. So using something like Angry IP Scanner, I'll search for Angry IP Scanner, bring it up. Well, I don't have it on this computer. I thought I had it, but I don't. If you're using Angry IP Scanner, when you see that you've got something like 10, 10, 21, realistically, if you're not a network person, you've got 192.168.1 is your network. You're just going to put a dot zero on the end of it and then a slash 24. A slash 24 is the exact same way of writing 255.255.255.0. So when you tell Angry IP Scanner, scan 192.168.1.0 slash 24, it's basically saying scan this entire network to show me all of the devices that exist on this network. So at that point, you'll be looking for something called AntMiner, and you'll see its exact IP address. You jump over to your web browser, and you just type in that IP address, and this is where it takes you. The default passwords on these, the username is root, the password is root. So you just get signed in. Now, look, me, I think I just lucked out. I see here my file system version uh, right here is 2017. So I this might actually work with an upload. Here's where I'm going to go to find. Uh, I'm going to go to the upgrade section. And right here, flash new firmware image. We see that right there, right? I'm going to choose my file. I think I put it on my desktop. Yeah, I did. There it is. There's my AntMiner L3 Plus Hive on. I'm going to choose Open, and I'm going to choose Flash Image. It says, are you ready to replace the firmware? I'm going to say yes. So if I'm lucky, this will work. That would be really, really cool if I get this lucky. I think it's working. Usually it throws an error right now if it doesn't work. I hear the fans going absolutely bonkers downstairs right now, rebooting the system. I can't believe it. It worked. Oh, we got so lucky. Okay. Uh, don't worry. If you weren't this lucky, I'm going to make a video on what to do when it comes time to actually flash your control board with an SD card. So I'll show you how to do that in the next video uh, or the next video or however long it takes to actually get that going. So um, this is what it takes to flash the system. We're going to just let it reboot. It's going to take a while uh, to come back up for the first time. It's going to have the same IP address, or it's very likely to have the same IP address. So give it like, you know, a couple minutes, three or four minutes. It doesn't take too long to boot these things up, but it will boot up. And when it comes back, using the same IP address and the same username and password, we'll boot into Hive OS. And after just a few seconds without touching anything, just leaving the web browser on this site, uh, it automatically freshes, you know, after about 60 seconds or so, and I see that I am, in fact, on the Hive OS firmware option. So, now what we need to do is we need to configure this to have the correct settings before we can move on to the actual hardware modification. Not a whole lot to do here. What we're going to do is at the top screen here, well, there's actually a couple things we have to do. First of all, under Hive OS, we have to put in our farm hash. So, you will need to create an account on Hive's website, and then I'll show you where to go to get your farm hash. So on Hive's website, we're gonna click sign in, and we're gonna sign in. Now I do recommend, as always, you keep yourself as secure as possible, uh, so you want to use um, two-factor authentication. Let me type in my two-factor code here. Log in. All right, now I get logged in. So I have a farm that I already created. If you don't have a farm, you'll want to create a farm. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to put this ant miner into the farm. So I'm gonna click on the farm to go into it. And now what I need to do is I need to get my farm hash. That's under settings right here at the very end. And there's the farm hash. Lucky for us, there is a copy to clipboard button. So now that I've copied that to my clipboard, I can jump back to my Hive OS paste my farm hash, and apply. So it takes a second right here to apply the farm hash, and when we do, uh, we will start to see this unit come to life in the Hive OS dashboard. So let it apply the farm hash for just a second. There we go. We have a login OK, happy mining, successfully applied. And back here in my uh, farm section here, I'm gonna go back to KH6's farm. I now see I have six workers. 
uh, which represents the new worker that is coming to life right now. Now we got to do the actual fan configuration itself. So we're going to go to minor configuration. This is where we configure our pool. Now notice here at the bottom right here, the setup, when I do this, it's only giving me two options. Watch this though. This is so interesting. I'm going to go to minor status, and then I'm going to go back to minor configuration. Look at this. Whenever I do that, more options come available. I think this is a bug with Hive OS, but that's what we want to do. So now what I'm going to do is at the very bottom, I'm going to flip on disable fan check and customize fan speed percent. I'm going to set the fan speed percent to be 66%. That way we can now unplug. Oh, I got to click save and apply. Click save and apply. And this way we can now unplug our amp miter, put the new fans on, and the next time it comes to life, it's going to skip the fan check and automatically have them running at around 2000 RPM. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to configure my pools. So I'm going to go back to pro hashing real quick. And I'm going to go under tools and choose a worker configurator. This is pretty neat. Under manufacturer, I'm going to choose Bitmain. I'm going to choose my L3 Plus, and I'm going to clock it down to 504 mega hashes per second. We haven't done that yet, but we will. I'm going to call this worker L3 6 because this is my sixth worker. And I'm going to put this in my home group, Knox Home. All of the configurations we need are now given to us over here on the right hand side. So I'm going to copy the pro hashing URL. Let's copy. Jump back to my actual unit here. I'm going to paste it in under the URL. My username here is khutch6. Paste that as my username. And my password is this long string here that I'm going to put right there. And now I'm going to click save and apply one more time. So I'm going to let this apply. This is going to take another 30 seconds or so because it's basically going to reboot. Uh, the ant miner is going to restart the mining process uh, so that it now comes up uh, pointed towards my pool and my configuration, my environment. So we'll let it sit for a second. Miner status is just going to sit here in like all zeros. And then once we see it come to life, I should also see it over here on my dashboard in the actual uh, minor section here. So give it a second to restart. After just a second, I see that I am up and mining. I also see, just to check, uh, my four hashboards uh, look pretty healthy right now. I like my temps right now. They're not looking too bad because I'm in an air-conditioned environment. If I jump back to pro hashing, now I see that I have my seventh unit online. It's going to show zero for a little while. Uh, let me move out of the way. It's going to show zero for a little while until it starts getting synced up to the environment. So at this point, we are ready to uh, unplug the ant miner, disassemble the fans, do a little fan modification, reassemble them, and plug it all back in. So that's what the next video is going to be all about. All right, y'all. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.